¿Cómo están? Nueva entrevista en Exploración Espacial. La verdad es que hace mucho tiempo que tenía ganas de sentarme y hablar unos minutos, aunque sea con Nikki Fox. Nikki Fox es la número uno de ciencias de la NASA. La verdad, ella supervisa prácticamente todo, toda misión científica o actividad científica de la NASA. Eh, pasa por su departamento, el directorio de ciencias de la NASA. Le reporta directamente al administrador de la NASA, que hoy es interina Janet, Pe Janet Petro. Eh, y la verdad es que esto se dio porque estaba justo ahí eh, viendo el lanzamiento de la misión Intuity Machines 2 y M2. Entonces pude sentarme un ratito con ella, no solamente para hablar sobre la misión y los instrumentos científicos que lleva el lander Atina, que está por aterrizar en la, en alunizar en la Luna, sino además eh, sobre qué podemos esperar de actividades científicas más importantes este año eh, que, que vienen de la NASA. Y seguramente notarán que le hice la misma pregunta que le hice a Steven Altemus, el CEO de Intuity Machines, sobre si hay posibilidad que no vayamos a la Luna y si puede ser que sin la NASA no tengamos una, econ una economía lunar. Bueno, más o menos quise hacer la misma pregunta para saber perspectiva de los dos lados, ¿no? tanto del sector privado como de la persona que maneja ciencias en la NASA. Así que bueno, ahí va. It's a pleasure to meet you. How are you? And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you must be excited. We are just about to have uh, three landers on its way to the moon with the different NASA experiments, loaded with NASA experiments, uh, at least two of them. And then, no, we have a, we are, we are, resilience is with uh, another radiation experiment. Three different areas of the moon, South Pole, Uh, um, equator, another one is near the North Pole, so you, you must feel like in a toy store. It's, it's wonderful, and I'll, I'll add that we also have Lunar Trailblazer, Trailblazer. Uh, which will be in orbit. So, um, you know, we've really got a, a lot of uh, coordinated stuff all going to the moon at the same time, which is really exciting. Um, we have uh, landers. We have a trailblazer, a satellite measuring the potential water on the moon. We have rovers. We have a hopper. Uh, we have Prime One. Mm -hmm. What are you, if you have to choose? <laughs> I know it's difficult, but what would you consider the most relevant or important? Maybe Prime One. How how vital is that we discover uh, we finally confirm water? Uh, we know there is there, but we don't know the volume yet. But how important will be is this? Oh, wow, we, there's water here. I think it's the combination of Prime One. Clearly, the, the drill is, is amazing, but having that mass spectrometer, the M Solo, at the same time, um, you know, with that drill, we're able to go through hard regolith. It isn't just sort of through the soft stuff. We're actually able to really drill down. You know, it goes down a little way, uh, brings up the, the M Solo, can sort of. Um, look at what it's bringing up and then it goes further down yeah. and so it's sort of you know bringing up chunks and so you can really not just um, look at what's under the regolith but also characterize the different depths under the regolith which I think is is a you know a real new capability for us it's really important that we know what's uh, what's in the moon particularly in those Um, shadowed regions, those permanently shadowed regions. I mean, as a scientist, that's super interesting because that's a preserved um, kind of almost archaeology site. I mean, that's that's you know that's really not changed that much because it is permanently shadowed. Um, but you know, if we're going to be setting up a sustained presence on the moon, uh, we we can't keep carrying everything with us. We need to be able to do things in situ. And so this is really for me the first kind of major step. Um, on, uh, on finding the information we need um, so we can move forward with, uh, with the Artemis program. Can we, at this point in time, can we say that CLIPS is a success? Well, I think it's a success, yes. Um, I mean, the, the whole point of the CLIPS program was to really um, incentivize new U.S. companies uh, that haven't really maybe done space hardware before, uh, incentivize them to be able to create these incredible pieces of technology. Uh, so with our very first one, with Astrobotic and the Peregrine lander, obviously we know that that didn't get to the moon. Yeah. But man, that's a company that had never built NASA or, right, right, or right. space hardware yeah. before. And they built a lander and they got it to the launch site. It launched. Um, yes, there was a problem with the propulsion system, but that team was able to sort of fly it 
um, even uh, in a you know in not not fully working order, we were able to do a lot of science. We had all the science instruments turned on for as long as we could, and they got that data back down for us uh, with Intuitive Machines One. We did make it to the moon. Um, three legs survived. Uh, the fourth one had you know uh, was was not so lucky, so that did mean that it tipped over. But even then, we were still able to have our uh, instruments um, on and to get as much science as we can. And so you know I, I think that that is really what Clips is all about. It is, um, you know, setting up this kind of sort of sustained lunar economy. Right. Uh, so actually having companies that can keep doing this, can keep delivering things to the moon for us. And so this is really the first step. Obviously, uh, you know, we're really excited about Blue Ghost, the Firefly Blue Ghost 1 uh, closing in on the moon, uh, getting closer and closer. And then uh, Intuitive Machines 2 about to get very close to the moon uh, when that rocket takes off. So right, actually, it's super exciting. Actually, you have two companies that are going for the second time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is basically in 3D machines and uh, iSpace. Mm -hmm. um, with all these commercial activities going there, investments, uh, can we say at this point that the, our way to the moon is in a negative return trajectory? Like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the context of we are changing administrations. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of rumors out there. No, let's keep the moon. Let's go to the Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we say right now? No. There's no way back. We are we are creating an economy on the moon. Well, obviously, you know, we're excited to support uh, the president's priorities, um, and uh, we will do great NASA science wherever we go. I mean, the, the wonderful course. thing about NASA is we do science from the very center of the sun to the very very edges of our universe, and so wherever we go we will just do really great science. And so we're just excited to take advantage of a lot of these new capabilities that are coming online for us. Uh, you know, really great partnerships with, with industry, with our commercial partners, with academia, with other government agencies. Um, you know, and it, it's an exciting time through the Artemis program, through the Artemis Accords, having over 50, uh, 50 countries sign up to actually go and explore the moon um, as a, sort of one global community. Right, and right, then right. Um, from the moon, clearly um, everybody's sights set on Mars, um, but we learn a lot by going to the moon. Um, you know, it's much easier to get to the moon. It's hard to land on the moon, but it's a quick, much quicker journey. It takes a long time to get to Mars. Uh, the, the Mars is only in the right place um, in relation to the to the Earth um, every 26 months. And so really what we learn from the moon is just going to be invaluable. The technology that we need to develop, um, all of those really clever things that uh, that need to happen in order to be able to send humans to Mars. Um, and just, you know, really, really excited about uh, what we can do, what science we can do on the very first Starship uh, that, uh, that heads off to Mars. Yeah. Um, as, as well as the starships that are going to the moon, um, and of course, uh, you know the Blue Origin and all of the other landers that we have in the CLIPS program. Uh, just it's it's a great time. It's really I think it's an energizing time. Yes. Uh, we're going back to the moon, and then we're going to go on to Mars, and uh, it's it's great. Uh, Nikki, you are head of science of NASA, and um, you supervise more than a hundred mm -hmm. different missions. Uh, science, what? Uh, tell us what is the most uh, th that excites you the more the most this year. What are we launching? For example, we are launching uh, this this same week. But it's Fears, Fears X. Uh, uh, there's so many. What what is it that we need to take a look? Oh, be careful with this, this, and this year and this year. Oh, I think actually one of the things that's amazing about what we're doing this year is it is we're really showcasing what we do across the whole of the NASA science portfolio. Um, you know, so we launched Europa Clipper. Uh, at the end of last year, it's getting ready to do its flyby of Mars, which is really exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got the the lunar landers. We have Spherex, which is going to be uh, being able to give us information about the first tiny, tiny, tiny time right after the Big Bang. So like, you know, the origins of our whole universe, which is just amazing to me. Uh, it's going to uh, it's going to actually find a uh, study um, 400 million galaxies in its two year mission, which is just spectacular. Yeah. Uh, Punch is actually launching with yeah. Spherex. That is a smaller mission, but it's a heliophysics mission. Uh, look, I know, I'm, I love, <laughs> love my heliophysics. So yeah, it's going to yeah. study the sun, yeah. which is also a star, but it's going to study, <laughs> it's going to study the sun. It's very innovative. Uh, they're four very small uh, spacecraft about the size of a suitcase. 
um, and three of them will kind of separate and form a wide angle camera. The other one is a narrow angle camera, allowing us to look down um, deep into the corona uh, where Parker Solar Probe um, has just been flying through, yeah. but really imaging that in very high precision and really explaining f more about how our star works, which is important for us as we as we want to find is there life, other life in the universe. Um, the only way you're really going to know that is you're understanding what makes our sun, our star, able to sustain life on Earth, and then you know kind of what you're looking for uh, when we go uh, and look at uh, the 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 other reaches. Um, you know, we've got amazing uh, instruments in our in our Earth science. We're getting ready to launch NISA, uh, which is a partnership between NASA and ISRO, the Indian Space Research uh, Organization, um, and uh, that's going to be an amazing mission. It's going to use two different types of synthet synthetic aperture radar so basically okay. looking in two different um, to sort of two different techniques uh, to be able to actually characterize our planet look at things like um, you know earthquakes volcanoes mudslides glacier formation um, look at how sort of how the water uh, water moves around our planet which is so critical for us as we you know we want to survive natural disasters we want to also better um, agriculture and give better uh, support to our farmers and um, and to our fisheries, looking at sort of coastal erosion. And so really excited about that, getting ready to launch uh, later this year. And with our biological and physical sciences, um, uh, taking advantage of all the great science we can do in microgravity on the International Space Station. So um, every one of our divisions just doing incredible cutting edge science. Just uh, last month, um, you know, the samples that we brought back from the asteroid Bennu, uh, seeing that they've got all the ingredients, all those of building life, blocks yeah. of life mm -hmm. and a saline kind of solution yeah. uh, to mix them up in. Um, and so showing as well the importance of bringing back samples as of course we'll be doing with the Artemis mission. So I think uh, the, the exciting thing for me is we're doing stuff right the way across the NASA science portfolio from our own star to the very edge of our universe. Nikki, thank you for your time. And I'm, I'm so pleased that you were explaining this with such a, well, I can see your passion <laughs> and excitement and it pleases me so much at, uh, that you're heading Science of NASA. And I'm sure that uh, regarding whatever administration we're pushing forward with that and any kind of scientific uh, activity. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Lo vuelvo a repetir, así como se lo dije a ella, lo vuelvo a repetir acá. Eh, pocas veces uno encuentra una persona tan apasionada y tan eh, tratando de uno decirle todo lo que va a pasar en ciencia y eso la verdad me gustó mucho. Espero que ustedes lo hayan disfrutado. Eh, así que bueno, otra, 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 otro lujo que me pude dar de sentarme con la persona que maneja los destinos de todas las actividades científicas de la NASA. No, 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 no le pasa a uno todos los días, así que fue un placer haber estado unos minutos con Nicky. Espero que les haya gustado. Suscríbete al canal, eh, si así te haces parte de la familia de exploración espacial. Cada vez somos más y la verdad es que es gratis suscribirse y, y si te gusta el contenido estás más que invitado para sumarte, darle like y activar la campanita. Así que nos vemos en la próxima.